Hey friends, welcome back. Uh, I have had a lot of requests to do some videos on note writing. So I think this is kind of a lot of material. So I'm gonna break this up. I'm gonna do one kind of longer video giving you generalized information about how to write an H and P. And then I'll do a series of, I'm hoping around five minute videos going through each problem so that you can kind of, we can give each problem the focus that it's due because it can get kind of heavy. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to write a proper H and P for an inpatient admission. And because I am ICU, of course, I'm going to give you an example of an ICU patient, but it can, there's, these are generalized tips that can sort of apply to pretty much any admission that you would do. So if we haven't met yet, my name's Bree. I'm a nurse practitioner and I work in a couple of ICUs here in Georgia. Welcome. <laughs> You're thinking, Brianna, why do I care about writing a good note? Nobody reads my note anyways, right? Wrong. Everybody reads your note. Oh my gosh. All the bedside staff read your note. They want to know if there are things that you didn't talk about in rounds, maybe you put it into your note. The consultants coming behind you, if they can't find you or can't get in touch with you, they want to know what's going on with your patient. What's your plan? What do you want from them? Me, as your colleague coming behind you, what did you do yesterday? What's the big picture? Y'all, notes are the most underrated part of what we do. And you will hear physicians and APPs all the time say the notes don't matter. Wrong, 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 wrong. The notes are not just documentation to prevent you from getting sued. The notes are our communication amongst each other so that we can carry over a consistent plan of care to get this patient better, to get them out of the ICU. So all my former students know I am super OCD about my notes and you should be too. So in order to get you where you need to be, let's start talking about some general tips. Okay, first and foremost, for a history and physical, avoid the copy paste. Stay away from that button, don't use it. I know a lot of our EMRs offer it. Don't fall victim to it. <laughs> Write your own history and physical so that you start fresh because your note will be carried forward each subsequent day by someone else from your team, if not yourself. So you wanna start with a good base. You don't wanna just copy forward the ER physician's HPI because so in the ER, they document very differently. In most cases, they're documenting for a litigious purpose. They're do they are putting everything in their note that is pertinent, positive and negative, that any rational person could say, I'm suing you because you didn't consider X, Y, and Z. So their HPI is gonna include a whole bunch of stuff that's not gonna be relevant to the diagnosis that you have formulated. And if you just copy all that stuff in there, you know, all that stuff they write, you know, negative for hematochezia, syncope, headaches, weak, all this stuff that doesn't apply to it, you're gonna have note bloat. You're gonna have a ton of words that don't really lend credence to your diagnosis and just creates a bunch of fluff that loses your audience. So don't use that. Take that out to start with. The second general tip is to use your EMR's dot phrases. Okay, I've used Cerner and I've used Epic. They both have something called smart phrases or dot phrases. Using smart phrases serves two purposes. One, it makes you extremely efficient because all you gotta do is change the, the pertinent information. And number two, it reminds you of things that you may have forgotten. I'm gonna include a video here where I'm gonna just briefly show you what it looks like in Epic's platform, at least the platform that I use at my organization. You need to spend some time when you first start your job creating smart phrases. And I mean, spend some time, like spend a half a day. Research common problems like an AKI and what you would include in the assessment piece and the plan piece of that so that when you go to do your H&P, all you gotta do is type in .aki and you pull over pre-populated information. It's super, super quick. When you are new in particular and you're going through your problem list, you have to often stop and look up, okay, what do I do to treat an AKI? How, how, do I need to give volume or do I need to diuresis? What do I need to do? And you have to spend time researching this or updating it so that your note look, reflects the common recommended treatment for this. And it, it takes a little while to remember it all because when you're new, you're just so overwhelmed with everything. If you have a dot phrase already set up for that, well, it's just an instant reminder to you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I need to avoid nephrotoxins. Let me take off the vancomycin combo. So 
I love, 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 love dot phrases. And I tell all my students that come through, spend some time when you first set up your EMR, making your dot phrases, write it all out. It's gonna make you a better clinician and it's gonna make you more efficient. The third tip is to follow your group's style. Okay, everywhere you work and even within different groups within the same organization, they all function a little differently. Everybody has their own opinion about how to write a proper note. If you're constantly going in and changing the way the note is written because you don't like the way your group does it, you're spending an astronomical amount of time having it make sense for you. So just go with the flow. If your group creates an HPI um, initially and then does a rolling dated thing, you know I'm talking about like the admission paragraph um, stays the same and never changes and then underneath that they just put the date and then what's changed that date just add to it <laughs> You're not going to serve anyone any good by deleting that and doing kind of a Constantly updated note another way that some documentation styles vary is based um, on problem list or system list so some places I've been document based on system so it'll be neuro and here's your problems under neuro and cardiac and here's your problems under cardiac other places document based on problems. Um, the EPIC EMR system I use at my main gig is very problem oriented because it kind of reflects upon billing. So you may have acute hypoxemic respiratory failure and you may have heart failure. And sometimes those kind of things co-mingle. So keeping the assessment and plan pieces separate gets a little bit tricky in that regards but follow the style with which your organization does it. The next tip is to be concise, all right? These notes that have paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of problems and a transition note, meaning when they move from one, you know, from the unit to the floor, from the floor to the unit, and it goes through all these things that have happened, it can be very hard for the reader to follow. And so then if you're coming in, on a patient who's been here for a month, it's very hard to figure out what happened and what the current situation is. So be as concise as possible. The next tip is sort of more designed for the students. Um, I, If you have ever been a student of mine, <laughs> you know that I'm a little bit OCD about my notes um, because Note writing for me is how I sort through what's wrong with the patient. It's, it helps me to come to the diagnosis and to then formulate a plan. So you have to, have to, have to get proficient at focusing on and writing your notes properly. Now, if you come to your preceptor and you finished your note in 10 minutes, you haven't spent enough time on it or you copied it from someone else and that's just cheating. What are you learning from that? Write your own note when you're precepting. You, for an ICU patient, most of these people have a lot of problems, right? It's not just one body system. You're not a pulmonology consultant, so you can't just chart on the pulmonary system and call it a day. You got all the body systems and they almost always all have a problem. You should include all of those. A good ICU note that you're giving to your preceptor should have six, seven problems on it. Okay, spend some time investing in it. Look through all the labs, look through all the diagnostics, look at the patient and write the proper problems in there and give them attention. It's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because sometimes people come to me with three problems and that's rare in an ICU patient. Now, if you're doing a rotation with a specialist group, with a cardiology group or a pulmonology group or ID, it's very different. You're, you're not gonna be doing a full, nine system, review of systems, um, you're gonna focus in, you're gonna hone in on your problem, but you're also gonna be seeing a whole lot more patients. So there's a little bit of pros and cons there. And last, but most importantly, this is my big takeaway. If you pay attention to nothing else I've said in this video, pay attention to this. This is the most important piece of note writing, no matter what kind of note you're writing, progress note, H&P, consult note, you know, inpatient hospitalist, I, I don't care, whatever the note is, this, these are the three specific things you need to address in the body of your note, the paragraph of your note, the HPI of your note needs to include these three things. Why do they come in? Why are they here? what they come in for? And number two, 
What are the current problems that you're facing? So that I know as the reader coming behind you, these are the challenges this patient is facing. They have acute hypoxemic respiratory failure requiring ventilatory support. They have cardiogenic shock and they're on an ionotrope. You know, they can be brief. You don't need to have a sentence long of your pertinent positives and negatives to prove to me that they have cardiogenic shock. Just tell me they have cardiogenic shock and where you're at with that treatment, okay? So why they came in, what the current problems are, and what are you doing to fix the problems? Specifically, how are you gonna get them out of the ICU? What's your plan to get them? Your, your goal when you transition from the bedside to the provider role changes vastly. You're not focused on the nitty gritty details of the day. You're not. Stop focusing on that. Stop it, y'all. Stop it. Your focus is on how are you getting them out of the ICU? Whether that's comfort measures out of the ICU because you can't fix them, or what are you doing to fix them? That is always what should be in your brain, whether you're presenting to your attending or writing it in your note. Your goal is to get them better. What are you doing today to change that? Okay guys, this is just a brief look at an H&P, a very common presenting problem of cardiac arrest that you will see all the time in the ICU. So this is an h and I'm gonna show you sort of a brief overview. I'm gonna let you look at it this way and then I'll kinda of zoom in a little closer so we can look at it. I think I have seven or eight problems on here, which is a pretty decent note. All right, so this is a made up patient. I have totally created the specifics out of thin air, but this is very common and reflective of what we tend to do in real life. In my opinion, the HPI should be brief. It should be a paragraph possibly two. Beyond that, you're gonna lose your audience because it's just too many words. You get the note, the note bloat thing going on in there. So you start out with your once, one, one. See that finger, one sentence long, brief, history okay this this is their presenting problems which gives you a picture of how debilitated and what their problems were before this cardiac arrest happened then um, pertinent and relative details not the entire er note okay you don't want all the pertinent positives and negatives that they put in an er note everyone that follows you is not going to care that they had negative hematochezia or diarrhea you only want to know the things that are pertinent to what you think the diagnosis is okay so our diagnosis here is cardiac arrest so what's pertinent to that is how long were they down for okay if you've ever worked in an icu you know this is crucial because if they've been down for a long time the chances of them coming back are slim to none and it tells you about how much sicker they're going to be so i always include that um, generally i like to include what the red primary arrhythmia was in a lot of cases, you're not going to know, but if you have that information, you need to put down PEA or VFib rest. That changes the etiology, which then changes your note. This sentence here lends credence to my theory that this is respiratory to cardiac arrest, and that's why I've included it in here. To me, it's pertinent. Um, I always include when they were tubed, right? Were they tubed straight from the get-go, or were they not intubated until later? Then I'm going to say they're coming into the ICU and one, again, one finger, one sentence of the presenting problems that you're already seeing. I'm already seeing encephalopathy. I'm already in seeing anoxic injury. Okay, that's super indicative on a cardiac arrest patient. They have an AKI, shock liver. Just very briefly tells you what the problems are from the get-go, okay? Then I'm gonna put a little sentence or two telling me how bad they are. Well, he's already on two pressors. He's just on a little bit of vent support, so we're not in major hypoxic respiratory failure. It was probably more intubated in the setting of cardiac arrest. So that, that tells me a lot. I wanna put a little blurb about where we're at in the process of targeted temperature management. So we're initiating hypothermia protocol. I wanna know what's going on neurologically because these are things I have to address usually pretty early on. And I also wanna address how bad is my AKI because this is also, so the kidneys and the brain are not protected organs. So those are the problems you often encounter first. Do I need to do dialysis? Do I need to put them on a continuous EEG and put them down for the season? And then, of course, goals of care is always super important. So, again, brief paragraph telling you what they came in for, what the problems are, and what you're going to do about it. That's all you need to know in here, all right? Now, if your institution is the kind of place where they do rolling notes, you would, you know, kind of delete some of these last little bits, and you would update it with what the current stuff is. If it's dated, you would just skip down a line and put your date here about what the current stuff is here, and you'd leave this the same. After your HPI, you're always gonna do a sentence or two talking about your critical care time and who you staffed it with. Then you're gonna follow it up with your problem list. 
And I like to break it up into assessment and plan. This is just how, what works for me. In here, I'm gonna include all my pertinent positives and negatives and what I'm planning to do that day. This is going to change every day. This should always change every day, unless you wanna say something like, you know, if you have pneumonia, you might say continue antibiotics or something like that. Um, so if you'll notice, these are pretty brief. I kept these brief on purpose. I didn't want this to be super wordy. When you're new, this is gonna be more wordy than when you're more experienced. Once, as your experience level grows, you'll figure out how to very quickly come to your um, diagnosis and only include the pertinent stuff. Early on, you tend to include a lot of your other pertinent negatives and things like that so that people can follow your note and read your rationalization, and that's okay. Um, encephalopathy. I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm not going to go over all of these in detail about why I included these things and what you need to do for the workup process because I think I'm going to do brief, you know, maybe less than five minute notes um, going through each one of these individually because there's just too much to say in this video to keep it concise. So again, that's what I consider to be a good brief note. An ICU note, friends, should have problems. You should have a lot of problems on there. Six, seven problems, that's a decent note and you need to put time into it and your preceptors need to see that you've invested your brain power into this and not just spewed out some stuff that you copied over from the last person. Okay, so this is just a general overview of what I think entails a good h and I think this can be applied to whatever setting you're working in and just realize this is overwhelming at first. When I first started, um, I think my first day off orientation, I had eight patients and I admitted my ninth in the ICU and I was there until 11 o'clock at night writing notes because note writing to me took a long time to get um, very proficient and fast at. It gets better with time. Just remember to focus on those key takeaways that I told you about what they came in for, what the problems are and what you're doing about it. And this is gonna get better and better and better with time and with experience.